Hey, this is Digital by Computing. Today we are talking about whether a SAN or a NAS is better. So as you know, my name is Emilio. I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. And today we are talking about a SAN or a NAS. Which one is better? Well, that's a really odd question to be asking in the first place. It's like asking what is better, an orange or an apple? Some people may have a preference over one or the other, but they are completely different. Yes, they are both fruit. A SAN and NAS are both storage devices that are on a network to some extent. They have different functions. Pair them with different ingredients. So they are very, very different and they, and they provide different services to each. A NAS is what's called file-based. So it is completely uh, dependent on SMB and NFS protocols acting as a file server, while a SAN is what's called block-based. Block and file are two different sorts of technologies, and generally when you're hearing the term SAN, we are talking about block-based. When you hear the term NAS, you're talking about file-based. It stores any data that you particularly want to store in a centrally managed location. What you will do with a NAS is you will have all of these disks that you put into a physical NAS and then you combine these disks together into what's called RAID groups. You create storage pools, you create volumes that are then presented to a network. Volumes you can create are, for example, SMB shares, NFS shares, which essentially are the combinations of those disks that are the RAIDs and the storage pools that you've created that are made up of physical hard drives that are inside the NAS. So in the olden days, you would just have a file server that you'd have a physical disk uh, you know, connected inside of a server in a PC, and that can become your file server, and that's where you store all of your data. Your, what you do now is you have what's called a NAS, and that replaces your traditional file server, and now you are managing all of your files and everything all within a hardware-based storage network. A SAN is essentially a block of disks, very similar to, this, to the NAS. It, from a hardware perspective, you've still got a physical piece of hardware that contains multiple disks created into different RAID groups, into different pools, storage pools, and then are created into what's called a LUN. So unlike the NAS where you have a, a, a volume or a SMB or an NFS share, on the SAN side, you've got the, those group of disks that are created in what's called a LUN or a logical unit number. This is a group of disks that are then presented to a particular service. Generally, a, um, a NAS will be used, as I said, for file servers. A SAN will be used for services such as a virtualization environment, perhaps VMware, etc. In short, a SAN is presented to a server or a service as if it's a disk that is locally attached to the computer. From the operating system point of view, it will see it as if it's physically connected into that server or that computer. The two most common protocols that are used by SANS are iSCSI and Fiber Channel. So you can provide these LUNs to a server. Let's talk about VMware ESXi, for example. I've got a VMware ESXi server, which is used for creating virtual machines. And I can, I can dump those virtual machines or store those virtual machines on a LUN, which is presented to the ESXi host over iSCSI or over Fiber Channel. From an iSCSI perspective, I've got the two ends. So my SAN, it has my LUN and then I've got my VMware site, uh, I create what's called a path between those two using iSCSI initiators. It's using a WWN or an IQN. These are the sort of the unique identifiers. The iSCSI initiator interprets the connections between the two physical devices. And then I just provide that LUN from my SAN to my host over iSCSI. Uh, there is a number of, uh, you know, prior backend configurations that need to be done on the SAN and on the uh, VMware host to allow the communication to happen between the two. But once that is established, you then present it over iSCSI through the iSCSI initiator. Once that is presented to the VMware side, I then can create what's called a data store from that LUN, which then I use a just, as just a bunch of disks to be able to then go and create my VMs. 
iSCSI generally can be transferred over the Ethernet protocol. So you can use existing um, Ethernet switches. So you've already got your network switches such as your, you know, your Cisco, HPE, those sort of vendors which do already network Ethernet switches over RJ45 network cables. And you can pass the iSCSI protocol over this IP internet protocol packet. So you don't need any other fancy equipment, you just really need your network switches to be able to pass your iSCSI traffic over. The alternative to iSCSI generally is fiber channel. This is more of a dedicated fiber connector between your SAN and your server or your ESXi host in this example. Uh, you, you can connect a SAN directly to an ESXi host uh, over fiber channel. Uh, the fiber channel card will be required on the back of a SAN and on the back of an ESXi, ESXi host and then you'll have a fiber channel cable connecting the two together and then you can establish the connection that way. Commonly in a larger organization you're going to have fiber channel switches where you are running multiple fiber channel cables between the SAN, between the storage processes on the back of a SAN into these uh, fiber channel switches and then from you know, multiple HBA cards or fiber channel cards on the back of uh, your servers, your ESXi hosts, for example, into these fiber channel switches. And then you create what's called zones between these channels to let the, um, the you know, I guess the, the fiber traffic know where to go and what traffic to flow from one device to another. You can also set up multiple levels of redundancy this way over the fiber channel switches using these different zones to let the traffic know which way the traffic should be flowing. So really in short, there is no answer to which one is better because they do provide different services. So you've really got to ask yourself, what is the purpose? What do I need to do in my organization? Or even if you're doing this from, from a lab perspective at home, is what do I want to achieve? If I just want a place to dump a whole bunch of files, to dump my movies, to dump documents, to dump my data, etc., you may want to look at the NAS base or the file base option. If you want to use it for say building virtual servers to be able to just provide a big dump of you know disks, just essentially raw data to a, a, a server such as a virtual hypervisor server, you then want to go down the SAN route. So really they are the differences. You've got a file base, which is NAS, block base, which is SAN, and they really provide different services depending on what you require. There you go, that is my overview. I would love it if you uh, commented, if you did, uh, you know, if you have any questions or if you have any conundrums. Also subscribe to Digital by Computing and follow me as well for a whole bunch of more videos around this and very similar topics in the technology space. But for now, I love it if you like this video and we'll see you next time.